What's going on all you Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an overview of the Justice League New 52 Omnibus from DC Comics. So, let's get started. And welcome back everybody. Now, this book does come out officially in the direct market and the book market on June 22nd. However, some places overseas have already had their copies out for a while. It just depends on where the books get printed. So here we have Justice League, the new 52. Here's what the spine looks like, and I'll be doing a closer look here in a few minutes. And then the back of the book. The book retails for $125, and it is a thick one. Y'all know how I like them. Thicker than a snicker. All right, so this has been previously collected before. I mean, I think... Out of all the Justice League stories, this is the one that has been collected the most in the most formats. So we've had the story available before in trade paperback format, in standard edition hardcover format. Uh, there is an absolute edition that collects the first 12 issues, which of course is taller than this omnibus. There's also a deluxe edition that came out about a year or two ago. And this is just as tall as the omnibus. However, it only contains the first 12 issues of the Justice League New 52. To kind of give you an idea of what is collected in here, here it is compared to all these standard size hardcovers with the stories that are featured in here. Plus this has a few more things. This is just to give you an idea of what is all in this omnibus. Now let's take a closer look at this dust jacket. So the dust jacket does have a flat finish to it. There's not a glossy tone to it. I'm shining the lights right up on it so there's no gloss. Here's a closer look at the spine, the new 52 Omnibus, Justice League Volume 1. You all know I love seeing Volume 1s. Gives me hope for a Volume 2. And then the back, none of it being glossy, even the flaps inside. Yeah. As far as under the dust jacket, we have this image here of New 52 Superman and New 52 Wonder Woman kissing. It's a pretty picture. I think that's Tony Daniel, if I'm not mistaken. Now, let's get this open and talk a little bit about the book, the story, and where it fits in. Okay, let's go ahead and get this opened. We have this image here of Batman and Superman meeting for the first time. And I'll explain why and how. Picture of Darkseid there. And holy crap, here are all your credits, your writers. So it does feature the work of J.M. DeMatteis, Matt Kent, Jeff Lemire, and Ray Fox. And then all the pencilers. I pointed out the writers, not inkers and colorists, of course. But I mainly wanted to focus on the writers because with all the writers in here, this isn't just a Jeff Johns-centric book. This also features all the backup stories and all the crossover uh, one shots. So here's the table of contents and what page you can find them in. Pretty cool that they did that. There's a nice introduction here by Dan Didio from 2017. Not sure if he would be writing one now. I don't know if he holds any ill will towards DC or not. Uh, but here we go, kicking it off with Justice League number one. You know, this is the David Finch cover. I always thought that his Wonder Woman had too big of a head and a small body. Um, but David Finch is an amazing artist. Now, Jim Lee, Scott Williams, reunited to retell the origin of the Justice League. So after the events of Flashpoint we have the reimagining, a re-envisioning of the DC Universe. All the DC Universe started over with a brand new number one. Batman number one, Detective Comics number one, Action Comics. Action Comics, the longest running comic book in American history, renumbered with a number one. Superman, Wonder Woman, you get the idea. There were 52 titles. So something happened in Flashpoint where the world was recreated. Now, I say that and much like all the other previous crisis, some stories were revamped and some stories weren't that touched on. So some things still happen in Batman's life. However, characters like Superman got a complete rehaul. This is a brand new Superman. He's younger than the Superman pre-Flashpoint. So that is something to keep in mind. So the story of Justice League origin is the first six issues of Justice League, and all of it takes place five years prior to New 52. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing, and I completely understand. So it takes five years in the past of the New 52 universe, not the universe that we were used to. So this is a 
new origin story for the Justice League. This is the first time the characters met. So if you ever have been interested in reading about the Justice League, then this is probably one of the best jumping on points because you don't need to have known anything beforehand. All you need to know is, hey, this is Batman. All right, this is the first time he meets Green Lantern. This is the first time he fights Superman. There's misunderstandings, and of course, they all come together to eventually fight the big bad in the end, which uh, in the first arc is Darkseid. Now, that probably sounds familiar with the exception of one big thing that happens to Superman to the story of Zack Snyder's Justice League. And it is, because he drew a lot of inspiration from this. It is, you know, a kick-ass story, honestly. It's Jeff Johns, one of my favorite writers of all time. It's Jim Lee, one of my favorite pencilers of all time. Coming together? Oh my gosh, yes. Now, if you're expecting the deeper, more philosophical storytelling that you're used to from Jeff Johns, like in the pages of uh, Flash or Green Lantern or JSA, this is a little bit different. This is more in your face, Jeff Johns. He takes a newer approach at writing when it comes to the New 52. He did the same thing with Aquaman. And speaking of Aquaman, yes, the entire crossover is here. So let's talk about the contents of this particular omnibus. So we have Justice League 0 through 22. So it does include the Captain Marvel, I'm sorry, Shazam, backup stories, and issue number zero. Uh, Aquaman 14 through 16, Justice League Dark 22 and 23, uh, DC Comics New 52, the free comic book special number one, Justice League of America 1 through 7, Trinity of Sin, The Phantom Stranger number 11, uh, Constantine number 5, and Trinity of Sin, Pandora 1, 2, and 3. So that's a lot. That's a lot of storytelling. And with the inclusion of things like Phantom Stranger and Constantine, you get the full Trinity of Sin storyline, which mainly focuses on Pandora. So it's cool that they also included the Pandora miniseries, all three issues of that. So one thing you probably could tell is that Jim Lee sticks around for the first six issues, introduces the characters, and then we fast forward to present time. Um, and then... Uh, we get like the introduction of Green Arrow. We have fill-in artists like Gene Ha. There's Green Arrow right there. Um, and then Jim Lee eventually comes back. Ivan Rice um, also takes over the book, but he does some fill-in art here in issues 8 and 9. So Jim Lee does come back to do the rest of the issues the first year, so taking us to issue 12. The first one served as an introduction. The second one introduces a newer character, Graves, over here. And then... We get this wonderful kiss here with Jim Lee, Wonder Woman, and Superman. And, of course, we get these little hints and backup stories of Pandora. You can find out all of that storyline in the pages of Trinity War. Now, here's Tony Daniel doing fill-in issues. And all of it leading into the Throne of Atlantis crossover event. So every little bit of it is in this omnibus. Uh, all the Throne of Atlantis, all of Trinity War, and all the backup stories of, like I mentioned, Shazam. So weird calling him that instead of Captain Marvel. But you get the origin of him, and this actually is what the movie drew heavily from. This backup stories and the retelling of Billy Batson becoming the character of Captain Marvel. Or whatever. They, I can't even remember what they call him in the movie. Shazam? They, I know. I don't think he ever does state what he calls him. But anyway, all the backup stories and issue zero are together. So I like that. I like that they took him out. Actually, I really like the mapping of this omnibus. So the original backup stories for Captain Marvel or Shazam are found at the end of each issue. So issues 6, 7, 8, 9, they all had those backup stories. They all put them together here with issue 0. I like that because all of that eventually leads into the character showing up in Trinity War. Now, one thing that you may have noticed, this is pretty cool that what they're doing, is that here's Justice League of America number 1, which is a brand new series, that the issues and the variants are in between chapters. For example, you have the main cover right here, and then you have the variant in the back. Uh, and I'm sure you probably have noticed by now, even though we have a table of contents, we don't have any page numbers. So the table of contents don't really help. The other thing that they didn't do is, when I, let me go back. So with the main cover here and the variant cover, they don't tell you who the cover artists are. 
Well, that's Tony Danielle. I'm sure you can probably tell. Or he's got a signature there. And then this is Jason Fabuk. But he they don't tell you who the artists are or the issue number. So you really don't know what issue you're on. You're going to have to kind of take a guess by going back to the table of contents and trying to find out which issue you're on. For example, this is Pandora from Justice League number six. But honestly, that's not a big deal breaker. I think most of us just read the books cover to cover or put a bookmark whenever we want to stop. I don't think most of us really pay attention to when these issues take place or the, the, since the book is mapped well, you don't really need to keep going back to the table of contents to let you know when the next Trinity or where to find the next part of the Trinity War. So I, I get it, you know, the, but it does frustrate a lot of people that there's things like that. They can't go and find their spot they were reading or the issue they were reading or what issue they're on. So the Justice League is made up this brand new Justice League of Batman, Flash, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Cyborg. Cyborg's a new introduction to the Justice League in the New 52. Because beforehand, he was always with the Teen Titans. Then we also eventually get Firestorm and a brand new Atom. And then there's the case of Element Woman, who was a big heartbreaking part of Sandman. And I still have issues with her, even though it was Jeff Johns' decision to bring her into the New 52. So we do have the Justice League of America collected in here, one through seven. Interesting enough, that series only lasted 10 issues. Oh, my girl, Courtney, star girl. Um, so I'm surprised they didn't collect issues eight, nine, and 10. Maybe with a volume two, we'll get those in there. I don't know. And I say volume two because all of this leads directly into Forever Evil. So if there is a volume two of the Justice League Om New 52 Omnibus, Forever Evil will have to kick it off because the ending of Trinity War and the coming of these other characters that show up towards the end, there's Element Woman, um, leads directly into Forever Evil. So we've seen a lot of the artwork here. We got so much beautiful artwork, and this is the way the spread pages look to kind of give you an idea. We'll look at the binding here in a few. I am censoring that last page of this omnibus to show you what the covers look like. So you do get the cover to the Deluxe Edition by Jim Lee and Scott Williams. All the covers are in here and you saw most of the variants in between chapters. And the book, by the way, $125 and has 1,248 pages. So it's a biggie. Shane Davis's wonderful artwork. And then you get the character sketches designing the characters for the New 52 era. So I'm not, uh, the only version of this that I didn't own was the Absolute Edition. I forgot there's also a box set available of this. So, see what I mean? This has to be the most printed Justice League version out there in very many different formats. All right, so let's talk about the binding. So the book has sewn binding and there's that eye. It's a nice big eye for a book that's over 1,200 pages. And it lays over for the most part really well. You know, this is what the... Uh, spread pages look like it's just a little bit of gutter loss not much but I do want to point that out uh, for the people that it bothers going back towards the back here to show this cover here to the second printing of Justice League to kind of show you just you know without holding it down there is just a little bit of gutter loss not very much honestly so you do get beautiful artwork in here oh yes all the backup uh, files are here too Every one of them. Um, so there's beautiful artwork in here, like I mentioned, from Tony Daniel, Doug Mankey, Jim Lee, Brett Booth, Ivan Rice. Oh, man. This stuff needs to be an oversized format. And I'm glad they finally did this. Ten years, right? Because the book originally came out in... Or the single issue originally came out in 2011 when the New 52 kicked off. But hopefully the sales of this will warrant a volume two. I mean, this has to sell. Jeff Johns, Jim Lee... Justice League, check, check, check. Man, it's a beautiful book. And the paper quality is the only other thing I notice. It's just a little bit thinner than what I'm used to from DC. DC usually usually has these big, thicker, glossy paper. But that also weighs the book down. So, for example, uh, The Flash or Scott Snyder's uh, Batman, the book kept trying to close on me. And this does a better job. This, the, the, the weight of the paper, I think, is good. 
think they might have found their new way of printing Omnis. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you mentees that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for US customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and the build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any more questions, if you read the stuff and you want to upgrade your trade paperbacks or single issues, or if you want to get this omnibus because you have the absolute and this collects a whole lot more. And what your thoughts are if there's going to be a volume 2 and what that would contain. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Patreon and on Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel. And the links are in the description of the video. More importantly, everyone, please stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.